Hegelnade. Hi, hi Maria, how are you? Good, how are you? I heard you were hanging out here in your apartment, so I wanted to ask you 21 questions. Do you have some time? Oh yes, I am uh, in the middle of curating an exhibition, but for you, always have time. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing, thank you. So, what do you do and what type of photography do you shoot? I am a uh, founder and curator of Women's Street Photographers, and I'm also a street photographer and an artist. Amazing. And what camera and lens do you normally shoot with now? I am uh, shooting now with my uh, Fuji, which is right here. Fuji X, um, X-T3. <laughs> awesome, very great. <laughs> and um, it has an equivalent to 35 millimeter lens. And um, I'm also shooting with a 28, which is my favorite lens. Yeah. And what was your first camera? My first camera, oh my God, my first camera uh, was a, and is, it's right here. <laughs> all my cameras, I'm hanging out with all my cameras. <laughs> it's a plastic Soviet camera wow. called Smana 8M. And uh, I was 15 years old and when I started photography. And yeah, this is a, I started shooting 1980. And do you still use it? No. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I took this camera with me to uh, one of my trips to Bashkortostan, and I thought I'll do uh, a project in film. And I totally like forgot how to use it. I was like taking pictures and I forgot to rewind. Oh my goodness. <laughs> So what got you started in photography? Uh, so, as I mentioned, I was a 15-year-old um, teenager in Ufa, Bashkortostan, where I'm from. And I was, um, I tagged along with a friend to this photography school. And the teacher showed us a dark room and he turned the lights off, he turned the, the red light on, and he exposed the paper, and he put the paper in the developer, and the image started to develop. And I thought it was the most magical thing I ever saw. I fell in love with photography right away, and, and, and that's when I said to myself, I'm going to be a photographer. That's so cool. And so why street photography? I started doing street photography uh, a long time ago when I went to college in Moscow, although at the time I didn't know it was street photography. And in, um, in about like a few years ago, uh, I was doing a lot of commercial photography and I was hired to document somebody's vacation in China. So I brought two of my professional cameras and also I brought my point and shoot Leica. And I, I started just like shooting for myself, just casually, like from a hip. Yeah. And when I got back home, I looked through the images and I just, I loved that feeling um, that I felt when I was 15 year old. This excitement that I was doing something for myself without, um, you know, anyone telling me what to do, like what to photograph. And I just thought, this is, I just want to travel and take photos, um, street photos for myself. Yeah, the dream. <laughs> Ultimate dream. Yeah. <laughs> which I'm living now. <laughs> exactly, which brings me to my next question. Where did the idea for women street photographers come from? So I, I am very passionate about street photography and uh, just because there's just so much freedom and uh, you meet people and, uh, and just so many unexpected things happening when you're out on the street. So when the election happened in um, 2016, I thought, how do I 
empower female voice. And, um, you know, with that election, it just, it's just brought so many memories of sexism, um, you know, when growing, oh, growing up in, in um, and being a, oh, the only female photographer in Boshkortostan. And, you know, living here in America, I just, I enjoy the freedom. And during the election, I just felt this um, urge yeah. Like how do I? What do I do right. to 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 give voice to more women and to empower them? So, um, and that's how I had an idea of um, putting together a first uh, women street photographers group exhibition. So while I was researching, I would save all these uh, beautiful photographs done by women. Um, in this account that I opened on Instagram, and I called, I just called it Women's Street Photographers. And, um, and after a while, uh, I just start posting all this work. And, and yeah, and, and it's just, uh, it, it seems like uh, people wanted to, we were ready for this account right. because it became so popular uh, quite fast. So how did you get the word out with, about your new initiative? Were there challenges? Yes, yeah, so um, when I started the Instagram account, um, you know, I didn't really think about, um, you know, to, to, to become big and, and, and known account. I, I just wanted to get word out and to show the work of uh, other female photographers. And um, I was just researching, you know, how do I get, um, you know, more comments? Mm -hmm. How do you engage <laughs> with, uh, with other photographers? How do I start the conversation? And, um, you know, I was no, <laughs> I was no expert sure. in social media at all. And, and that's what excites me about all this because I learned so many new things. Um, yeah, I'm getting the theme that you love to discover new things. Yes, I, I just, like this morning, I discovered a, a new photographer. It's like, you know, when I started Women's Street Photographers, I was just like, okay, how, there were probably just a few of us. <laughs> and uh, like, how long will, will I last? And it just, I, I keep discovering these new photographers. And um, how do I get the word out? You know, every time I share somebody's work, uh, women, they reshare and somebody else reshare. I also want to point out that my goal is not just to show work by female photographers. I want to show a good street photography. Good photography just happened to be done by women. Exactly. Yeah, absolutely. And so you've already written a book and you have a community of over 124,000 people on Instagram. What's next for women street photographers? Well, I curated a book um, and it was, uh, I had, uh, the, the foreword was written by uh, this renowned uh, National Geographic photojournalist, Amy Vitali, and the essay, a brilliant essay about history of women uh, photographers um, was written by Melissa Breyer, who's a New York street photographer. And uh, so what's next? I mean, I'm working on my next book. Yeah. And um, uh, another thing is that I'm exploring um, NFTs. Mm -hmm. okay. I would like to create an NFT collection by women street photographers. So this is exciting and empowering, actually. Uh, um, and there's not enough women in, um, in that space. Sure. So it's Women's Month, March is Women's Month. And so what advice do you have for maybe an upcoming woman? Oh my God. My advice for any a woman photographer, creative, is to get out there you know we we and i know because i struggle this with my own with like insecurities and and, and everything and just 
um, hold on to something that makes you feel uh, uh, feel better, you know, maybe find a mentor who in, can encourage you and um, get out there, you know, send your photos and, and uh, let go of perfectionism and uh, let go of this motion of that, you know, my photos are not good enough or, and I, I'm doing, um, I've done like maybe about over 50 Instagram lives uh, where I interview uh, women photographers who publish their books and we talk about how to overcome insecurities, how to be uh, more proactive um, into pushing your work, put, put, putting your work out there, uh, whether it's uh, sending your work to exhibition calls or contests or um, uh, send a book proposal. Mm -hmm self-publish a book yeah. um, do your own exhibition or uh, organize uh, uh, be more on social media uh, reach out to to other creatives uh, and this is how we, we it needs to, there needs to be more of us yeah <laughs> absolutely so what's your favorite part of running women street photographers oh my god this has been a, such a, a joy um, my favorite part is that I met so many amazing uh, women who um, some of them became uh, my good friends. Uh, you know, I mentioned Amy Vitali, Melissa Breyer, uh, Miss Rosen, my publicist. I mean, I, I just love talking to her all the time. Sandra Cataneo Adorno, um, Dominique Mizrahi, uh, Nina Welchkling, uh, Danielle Goldston, oh my God. Aldebrani Das, who is the latest uh, artist residency winner. Uh, Valerie Six, uh, winner of the uh, first artist residency that I created. And uh, oh my God, there's so many names. Yeah. I just, every time I travel somewhere, I try to meet local women. Um, yeah, I mean, it's just, <laughs> This is, the, yeah, this is my favorite part. Yeah. Meeting all these wonderful women otherwise that I wouldn't meet. Right, absolutely. And so do you have any projects coming up? Yes, um, as I mentioned, I'm uh, curating an exhibition, uh, a fourth annual exhibition. This year we have a guest judge, uh, a gallery owner and director of Klump Ching Gallery, Deborah Klump Ching. And last year we had uh, guest judge Polly Rungu, who is the founder of uh, Black Women Photographers. We actually just did a video with her. I know, isn't <laughs> it so wonderful? Oh, she's amazing. So the, the, the exhibition opening is uh, April 7th, uh, and it's going to run for, uh, from April 7th through April 24th, uh, I believe. And uh, it will be open daily. Um, except Mondays. Cool. Um, and it's, uh, it's a great exhibition, all, all this well attended. Um, exciting. Yeah, I'm excited to see it. And so switching it up a little bit, what are some tips for someone who maybe is intimidated to start a photography community like you did? And what are a few tips for someone thinking about starting one? Just a couple tips. Wow. Okay. So I think my first tip would be uh, do something you're passionate about. You know, this is this is the main um, tip. It's like find something you're passionate about, like truly passionate about. And and uh, and the second one is the what is the purpose of the starting community? Why do you want to start a community? And, uh, you know, in my case, it was like uh, empowering other women photographers. Sure. So why is very important. Yeah, absolutely. So a couple rapid fire questions. Color or black and white? Oh, both. <laughs> um, I like color and I like black and white. And uh, it depends where I'm shooting. And I never forget what Mary Ellen Mark said. Color needs to make sense. So I'm always aware of that. Yeah. Favorite city to photograph? Can it be a place? Sure. <laughs> uh, 
My favorite place to photograph is Bashkortostan. I go there every year, it's my happy place. I travel small villages and, and document everyday life of just ordinary people. That's awesome. Favorite area in New York City to photograph? It used to be Times Square. That's where I go away if I wanna work on my moments and just look for good light and shadows. Yeah. And uh, if I wanna do street portraits, I go to Washington Square Park. Yeah, that's a place to be for portraits. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it's, it's, <laughs> it's so lively and yeah. there's so many like beautiful people. And also I like to hang out with my other street photographer friends. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Candid or posed? Candid. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, uh, yes, candid. Film or digital? Digital. <laughs> Although I'm a big fan of film. Yeah. And I've been shooting film for so many years. I mean, I mean I've been a photographer for over 40 years and I started with film, but I like digital just because it's convenient. Yeah. <laughs> And you've shot some pretty historical stuff I saw. Can you tell me some of the images you've taken? You talking about 9-11? I am. Yes, um, when I was uh, working at the Associated Press, I, I went to, or I run, to document um, the Ground Zero. Wow. And I was uh, shooting film and I was standing across the street from the World Trade Center, uh, just focusing on, on people uh, when the, the South Tower collapsed. And it was, uh, I, I took this one shot. I mean, I, start, I, I heard this noise, trembling noise. I lift my camera. Um, it was Canon T90 with 85 millimeter. And I took one shot. I see in viewfinder the building is collapsing. Wow. And I took one shot and I started to run. And um, they, I didn't run far. I mean, I fell. That's when wow. the first time I, I got scared that people were going to run over me. And I looked back and, you know, I see this tremendous cloud just moving towards me. And I hid behind the car. And it was just... It, it was so dark and and silent and it just uh, like you're in the tunnel you know the car was moving and this sharp wind um, I thought I was buried alive wow so as soon as I start seeing um, like blinking lights and everything I, I just start making photos uh, Honestly, I don't remember like some of the photos I took. I was just so, I guess, shocked and traumatized by the experience. Um, like I took this photo, I have no recollection. Wow. And, um, and then I went home. I developed film at home. I mixed the chemicals. Mixed, mixed Immediately the, when you got home? I got home and I just, I was focused on like, okay, I got, I have to get film to AP because we didn't have developing machine uh, at, the, at the AP. So I mixed the developer, the fixer. I developed the film in, uh, in my bathroom. That's when I noticed I had a color film, which I almost developed as black and white. Oh my. And, and with a wet tank, I mean, with a wet film in a tank, I walked to the office um, and uh, yeah, and the next day when I woke up, my photos were like published in everywhere wow. around the world. That's incredible. And it's also so amazing that you don't even remember like, you know, being there like at once you came out of the shock. That's... Well, I remember no. <laughs> I was uh, there, but just... After the, 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 after the building collapsed, uh, I guess I went into this like um, self-preservation sure, mode. Absolutely. I, I yeah, my film finished, you know, I changed film, I changed the lens. And you don't remember any I don't of remember. Wow. So I was on the autopilot. I mean, yeah. I was a, already a photographer for 20 years at that point. So it was just, uh, I was just on the autopilot yeah. basically. That's amazing. And, um, 
so yeah, I mean, the, this my most known photo uh, of the survivors. Uh, I received a first prize of the World Press Photo Award, uh, and they're also part of the New York Public Library exhibition called Treasures, uh, which the only photographs from 9-11, they, um, they exhibit two of my photos from 9-11, which is remarkable. Yeah, that's it's a amazing. permanent collection, which I highly recommend to, to go and see this exhibition. And so I did see on Instagram, you used to be an extreme skier. <laughs> First off, how many lives have you lived? <laughs> and second, how did you get into that? <laughs> okay, so I keep, uh, I guess, discovering, rediscovering myself uh, every seven or 10 years. <laughs> um, as, I, as I mentioned, I've been a photographer for over 40 years. So when I was, um, you know, I was born in Ufa, Bashkortostan, which is on Ural Mountains, on the skirts of the Ural Mountains. And I start uh, being very serious about slalom and giant slalom when I was, I think, about nine, which I was already too old to <laughs> like compete and you yeah. know, to train for the Olympics. But I was training to become a, a ski instructor uh, until I fell in love with photography at 15. But I continue with the passion. I mean, I skied all over the world, uh, you know, all over the Alps in Europe and Argentina and Canada, here in the United States. Um, and when I say extreme skier, it's like, you know, you go to take a lift to the top of the mountain and then you would climb for another hour. Wow. Uh, so to, to ski on the fresh powder, the moguls, the heli skiing. I mean, <laughs> I loved it. That's so cool. And I know you started out as a photographer in Russia. How did you make your way to New York City? Yes, yeah, so I um, was part of the like this boat trip with like 150 photographers from around the world, and I helped to organize it. And my photos were chosen to be part of this uh, group exhibition of 14 young Russian photographers. And I was invited here and I came here and I just, I just loved it. I, New York is, has such an energy. I just, I felt free and I felt creative and, uh, I went to uh, International Center of Photography, so I was a full-time student there. And, and then I got a job at AP right away, so and I just uh, built a new life. Yeah. <laughs> and so this is a weird question, but if there were to be a movie about your life, who would play you? <laughs> Think hard, because you've had an, <laughs> such a fruitful life. <laughs> oh my god. Um, Yes, oh my. Um, Carrie Russell. Okay. Yeah, I can, I can see her playing me. <laughs> cool. <laughs> I like her. Yeah. And last question, who should we interview next? I already mentioned Sara Cataneo Adorno. Um, I'm just a big fan of her work and her story is so inspiring you know, like getting into photography when she was 60. And um, I'm curating her exhibition, uh, a solo exhibition during uh, Venice Biennale. And uh, her work is just wonderful. That's awesome. All right, so we'll call right up. And I mean, I feel like this interview probably needed another 20, 21 questions because this has been so cool. But I'll let you get anytime, back to it. Come here anytime, <laughs> <Amazing>. please. <laughs> well, I'll let you get back to it and thank you so much. My pleasure, Marie, my pleasure.